What's up guys? So it is May 19th. We're currently at the JFK Airport in New York City. Um, today we're flying to Peru. We have a layover in Panama and then we're taking a three hour flight from Panama to Peru. Uh, here are my girlfriend Ali. She's coming along with me. We're meeting up with her brother and her girlfriend uh, once we get to Peru. So yeah, let's see what we can find in Peru. filming for a little bit just because it's one in the morning and the area we were in was a little uh, a little fishy but right here this is the hostel we're staying in this is the room actually fishy it's pretty sweet it's a nice little place a little kitchen we even have uh, a little half empty coke coke bottle and then the bathroom right here you can't flush toilet paper in Peru that's a I didn't know that that's good that's, that's gonna be a little interesting you have to throw it out after you use it so uh, yeah, that'll be that'll be a fun one. Just landed the new hospital. This is it, not bad. A little smaller, but still cool. It's more in centralized Lima, so we're in the city right now, so. Pretty sweet. So we just checked into our hostel. We're staying at Loki, Lima. Um, really popular one. We're less than probably a quarter mile from the beach, so we're gonna walk to the beach, check it out, fly the drone. So this is John F. Kennedy Park, and for some reason there's cats everywhere. I don't really know why, but uh, there's a bunch of stray cats all over the place, and it's pretty sweet. So our time in Lima is done. We're about to hop on these buses right here. We signed up for a tourist service called Peru Hop. We're about to take the bus from Lima to Paracas. We're gonna stop at a couple cool places along the way. 
Um, one of the places is actually a plantation where uh, Spanish slave owners actually used to live and they had about a thousand slaves. Um, we're gonna go in the slave tunnels there, see what that's all about, and then we're gonna end up in Paracas. We're gonna spend the night and see what we can find there. Took about a four hour bus ride from Lima to Chincha. Uh, we're at a plantation right now that was formerly owned by Spanish slave owners and they owned about 1,000 slaves. Uh, we're about to go down to the slave tunnels where they actually used to keep the slaves and they say it's very dark and claustrophobic so uh, uh, it should be an experience. areas and there's some really rich areas um, there's also a lot of stray dogs which is something you know, really see in the states so that was uh, that was a bit surprising but uh, yeah we just scored a sweet deal on some ATVs so we're about to go hit up the ATVs go on a tour around the whole city uh, as you can see over here there's a bunch of desert so there's probably a bunch of dunes and uh, directly over here on this side there's a bunch of fishing boats and uh, you know beaches so it'll be interesting to see where they take us About to go see some penguins and sea lions, hopefully, maybe some birds. But we'll see how it goes. <laughs> So we just touched down in Huacachina. It was about an hour and a half drive from Paracas. 
Um, so this is one of the biggest oasises in South America. You can see behind me the sand dunes. Surrounding the city everywhere you look, you can see sand dunes. Um, tonight we're going dune bugging and sand snowboarding. Um, I'm gonna try to get some cool drone shots of the city because it'll be a pretty cool aerial view. Um, and yeah, you'll be up updated in the next few GoPro videos. <laughs> So the tour agency that we signed up for actually made a mistake and they overbooked one of their buses yesterday. So they had to put us on this bus right here, which is not the company's bus, it's just a you know, community bus from one of the cities we're in, uh, Nazca. And instead of sending us the way that our tour group goes because it's safer, they sent us um, through through the Andes Mountains on a, on a path that really isn't so safe. One, because the roads are so curvy and uh, you know it's easy to fall off the roads. And two, because um, tourists actually get held at gunpoint and get all their valuables stolen from them. But uh, yeah, we're about 15 miles from Cusco right now um, and we're sitting in traffic. There was no traffic the whole way and we, we really haven't moved for an hour and a half. But um, yeah, you know, the situation kind of sucks, but uh, one of the benefits was the road that we took to get here. The views were just incredible. We were literally 12,000 feet up on the top of the Andes Mountains and you can just see forever. It's pretty sick. So, uh, yeah, I'll let you guys know when we get to Cusco. Uh, it was pretty fun. The SWAT team came with 
tear gas and shields and they broke up the they broke up the protest I guess so back on the road again. So we just arrived in Cusco. Uh, we're about to take a taxi to our Airbnb and check in. So can't wait to shower. This is you from our Airbnb. All right, we're taking the first bite of alpaca. Eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. So we just left Cusco in a taxi. We got a driver here, Clemente. Uh, um, the name of the town that we're going to is, uh, qual es the name of the town? Pollantaytambo. <laughs> yep, that's where we're going. Uh, <laughs> we're catching a train from there, so it's gonna be an hour and a half, maybe two hour train. Uh, and then we're gonna go see Machu Picchu tomorrow. Uh, the views in the taxi right now are just ridiculous. You'll probably see a couple, I'll probably edit it a few in. Um, but yeah, we'll see you when we get on the train. on the train, we're about to take this about two hours to a town called Aguas Caliente. Uh, we're about to check into our Airbnb, and tomorrow we'll see Machu Picchu. arrived at our hostel here in Agua Calientes. Uh, the name of the hostel is Cusi K Oilor, and I'm not quite sure what that means, but I do know Agua Caliente means hot water in English, and uh, there's a big river that just runs directly through the center of this town. It's pretty crazy, and there's also huge mountains that just totally engulf this whole town, so uh, it's gonna be pretty cool to fly a drone through here. Uh, tomorrow morning, we're waking up at five in the morning, and we're taking a bus to Machu Picchu. Um, which I'm totally excited for because it's one of the seven wonders of the world and I, I, I have no idea what to expect. But then we're gonna come back here, I'm gonna try to get some cool drone shots of the city, and then I think we're heading back to Cusco. So uh, yeah, next time you see me, I'll be at Machu Picchu. This is the line at four in the morning. It goes down for about, I'd say half a mile. It's crazy. It's about five in the morning, we're in the line for Machu Picchu. So we're good. Almost there.
just got done walking around the ruins of Machu Picchu. We took about a 15 minute hike up from the lower level, now we're on the upper level. And we're about to climb this mountain right here, which is gonna be about an hour hike. So we're about to go all the way up there. Um, hopefully catch some cool views. We're halfway, halfway up the mountain. This is no joke. We're not even halfway up the mountain. We're about probably 5% of the way. And I had to take a break. <laughs> we will proceed. <laughs> got to the top. Easily one of the hardest hikes of my life. It took about an hour and a half. Uh, we stopped for a break at least at least 10 times and I was drenching with sweat. But the views at the top, so worth it. That's Machu Picchu down there. You can see it. You just see mountains everywhere. It's ridiculous. Just checked out of our hostel. Uh, I really don't think I stressed enough how hard that that hike was that we did earlier. That's probably the physically the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life. I played professional basketball, Division One basketball, and that was really probably the hardest physical activity I've ever done. But the views are worth it, and uh, we're about to go on the train right now. We're going back to Cusco. Uh, it really sucks to leave this beautiful town, but uh, I guess it's time. And yeah, Machu Picchu, super cool. train from Agua Caliente to Ayati Tumbo and we're meeting up with a cab driver his name is Clemente uh, and he's kind of the man so we're gonna go crazy when we see him Airbnb in Cusco. Uh, the Airbnb was a little, a little sketchy, but it did the job. Uh, now we're about to take the airplane from Cusco back to Lima, uh, spend the day in Lima, and then our flight is tomorrow, well, in two days at one in the morning, so back to Lima. It's like, this is incredible. Can we get less legroom? Can we, can we get less legroom? This is too much legroom. Last day in Peru, we're going to check on the cathedrals. And the plaza. Yeah, see you, bro. It's real. Peace forever. Bye. Peru is real. Peace forever. Clemente forever. 
Meant it forever, baby. <laughs> see you guys. I'll see you guys. Be safe. So we just got to the airport. They just went their separate ways. We're flying to Panama. And then we have a about an eight hour flight back to New York. And then I have a three to four hour drive back to Boston. Uh, all in all, Peru was pretty sick. Had a lot of great times, met a lot of cool people. Um, got a lot of cool shots. And I definitely recommend it. And I can probably see myself coming back to Peru in the future. Uh, yeah, it's my second travel vlog. Thanks for watching.